The tape was posted online in the last few hours. Same desert setting, same orange jumpsuit, and it seems the same threats of beheading delivered by the ISIS terrorist who has been dubbed Jihad John because of his British accent. When was the last time you saw a terrorist care about whether a word or image would hurt someone's feelings? Go ahead, we got a few minutes. So why does the American, no, wait a minute, the world public insist that we walk on eggshells when we discuss the despicable radicals who are killing innocent men, women, and children? Welcome to Midpoint to cut through all the verbal bovine droppings. Former Republican member of the House from Oklahoma's 5th Congressional District, columnist and radio host for The Washington Times, Ernest Istuk joins us. Congressman, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks. Where did all the political correctness start, in your opinion? Because it had to begin somewhere with someone who was determined to prove that we as Americans could be soft and comfortable. I, I, you know, that's a great question. I don't have a clear answer, but I think it probably started on, on college campuses, where a lot of the people, radicals back in the 1960s, integrated themselves into the, uh, the professorships uh, at college. And they adopted different uh, just as they were adopting, you know, feminist studies and black studies and so forth. Uh, they said, well, you know, if we're going to have all these minority issues, we have to be sensitive to their needs. Therefore, we're going to have speech codes on college campuses to restrict what people say. And then they built out from there. And, you know, the, the, the epitome of political correctness is if you cannot say something that a Muslim finds offensive. Uh, now, I realize most Muslims are not, they don't have the thin skins of these radical jihadists, the terrorists. But nevertheless, the ability to talk about other people's religion is a key part of it, but they want that to be a taboo topic. That political correctness carried to its extreme. I would like to see world leaders marching in Paris and in Washington, D.C., not only saying we have free speech when it comes to radical Islam, but we have free speech when it comes to political correctness. Wouldn't that be refreshing? It would be refreshing, it, but I think you and I both know that that is never going to happen because we have, and excuse me if you will, politicians and people who basically want to make sure that they get elected the next time, they appeal to as many people as humanly possible, they don't want to offend anybody. Congressman, let's be very blunt here. Isn't it time for people who hold the roles of government, who are sitting at the head of any leadership, to go ahead? Offend a few people. Why not? Say something out loud for a change. Maybe you won't get elected next time, but maybe somebody will actually be able to say, wow, he or she actually said something honest. Absolutely. Look at some of the reaction to Louis Jinnall uh, when just the other day he made it clear that we should not have the walking on eggshells when we talk about radical Islam. Uh, and yet uh, people do that. They say, oh, you, you can't go there. You cannot have that conversation. Uh, but again, when you look at what's happening with political correctness, do you ever wonder why it is so one-sided? That is, you can say anything you want to to offend conservatives. You, you can accuse them of being uh, against children. You can accuse them of being racist and anything like that. Uh, the whole reason, I think, traces back to the, the nature of the Democratic Party right now. It is a coalition of different minority groups that have come together and trying to form a majority of minority interest. Whereas the Republican Party represents more, uh, more mainstream people where they say, okay, we can insult people that are in the mainstream because they are part of the Republican coalition for the most part. But the people in the Democrat coalition tend to be people that are part of minority groups who feel that they are more sensitized to insults. You believe you there is a direct link between terrorist violence and political correctness. Make that link for me. There is a philosophical link there. When we are told that because terrorists will um, escalate their attacks, uh, we say something or have an image uh, like you've had in uh, different uh, newspapers, an image of uh, the Prophet Muhammad and so forth. They say, because we are insulted, we will attack you. That's what people do in the name of political correctness. They attack people who insult them. Political correctness is a form of terrorism. Now, it does not go around beheading people. It's not that type. But it does try to terrorize us by limiting and restricting our behavior. Now, that's the object of terrorism itself. 
it's also the object of political correctness. All right, Congressman, right. now what about those people who will snap back, and I'm sure you hear it, I'll bet they're saying it right now in some corners of the globe. They're saying, wait a minute, Congressman, you're out there pushing hate. You're out there pushing that we need to go ahead and we need, we need to use words like radical Islamism or extremism, whatever it is. When we are insulting people, you're part of the problem simply because you're trying to hurt people. How do you answer that? Is it hate speech? to point out that Adolf Hitler was a monster, the extermination camps, the Holocaust, is that something that we can't do because, oh, it's hate speech? Well, look at the object of that speech. It's not devoted to being hate. It's devoted to making people aware, aware of a horrible danger that killed millions of people. Joseph Stalin, as the ruler of Russia, was involved in so many murders. You've had it in, in China with Mao. You've had it in so many places in the globe. Are we then therefore free to talk about the terrible things done in the past, but we cannot talk about the terrible things being done today because political correctness gets in the way and we cannot offend the jihadists? I realize that most Muslims are not jihadists. Most Muslims will be peaceful people, but there is a significant group in their faith that adopts these terrorist tactics. It cannot be off limits to talk about it. It's dangerous if we do that, because then we fall asleep and we don't defend ourselves. I only have about 45 seconds left then. To combat political correctness, would you say then that when it comes down to seeing videos and pictures of hostages who are being taken, threatened executions, maybe the American public needs to see somebody being executed, maybe that would make a difference? Would you go to that extreme? Well, you know, that's you can find it on the Internet if you want to find it, whether or not the uh, so-called mainstream media choose to televise it or not. It is out there, and it shows people just how abhorrent, how sick, how cruel, how savage, how barbarian these tactics are. And when you understand your enemy, then you know what you have to do to combat this enemy of terrorism. It is the in-your-face style, which I think a lot of people have gotten used to, and I think a lot of people might actually uh, approve of it at this point in time, maybe to get past some of that political correctness. Congressman Ernest Estook, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thank you so much. We'll do it again. And remember, don't ever be PC. Okay. All right, take care. Other side of the short break, Facebook claims they are the fuel driving a massive economic engine. This while another analyst has a dire warning about that very fuel. You knew that was going to happen. And at 43 minutes after the hour, the reality of numbers for Mitt and Jeb. It's all right here on Midpoint.